Alright, so in this video we're going to cover the design part. And I'll say that 90% of the cases, people are just interested to design an H-pattern solar cell which consists of bus bars and fingers. So Gridler is equipped with an inbuilt designer for this very purpose. So let's dive right into it. So this design page here is roughly divided up into the wafer section and parameters which describes the front of the cell and the rear of the cell. With wafer shape, let's say we have a monocrystalline wafer that has a 21 centimeter diagonal pseudo square shape. For both front and rear, we could choose the number of bus bars. So let's make a four bus bar example. At any point, we can toggle between the front and rear plane views. So on either of these views, you can see the wafer outline in black, the metal layer which is contacting the semiconductor outline in red. And then we have these X points. These are the current extraction points. They are the points where current flows out of the bus bar, either being solder points when it's ribbon connected or pro points when it is simulating an IV test. So here we have defined 15 of these points along each bus bar. We could change that to a much denser number if we wanted to. But generally 15 points or one centimeter per point is roughly what you would find in most IV testing conditions or solder point densities. In terms of dimensions, we can have control of the bus bar width. So let's set here 1.1. With the style uh, being straight means rectangular bus bars. For more detailed design, you might want to choose segmented bus bars or tapered bus bars that may have a more economical use of silver paste. So in the pro version, there's a lot of freedom on the styles and the dimensions, which you can choose. But here we're going to stick with the straight bus bar. Uh, same thing with the bus bar ending. In the pro version, you'll be able to make, for example, pointed bus bar ending in order to save the amount of silver used. Print method. Single print means the bus bars are drawn in the red layer. That's the layer that's contacting the semiconductor. If we chose dual print, we get the bus bar sitting in the blue layer. The blue layer does not make contact to the semiconductor layer. It only makes contact to the red layer. So effectively, that simulates a dual print process where the first print lays down the fingers that fires through to make contact to the emitter. And with the second print laying down the non-aggressive bus bar silver paste, which only touches the metal fingers. After that, we get to choose the number of fingers and we get to set the finger width. End joining refers to whether or not fingers are joined up at the ends. So pair means they are joined pairwise. None means they are not joined. All means there's an extra perimeter running to connect all the fingers near the edge of the wafer, which is often seen. Edge gap just refers to the distance between the edge of the grid and the wafer edge. So here we can just choose a typical value of one millimeter. On the rear side here, if all we're interested is to later simulate the monofacial nature of the cell, we can even disable the rear pattern altogether. But in this example here, we're just gonna keep it on. And by default, it is a full area metallized rear, as you can see by the red layer being almost covering the entire rear of the wafer. The blue layer here is the rear solder pads. Let's change them here so they become the same width as the front. We do have some control over the style. So we could, for example, make them into round pads. This box solder pro points refers to how many pads per bus bar. So if we enter four, we get something like this. And we can make the rear edge gap similar to the front. Once we're happy with the design and we can have a look at the front and rear side again, we can save this design into AutoCAD DXF. So although most solar cells are monofacial, some may not be. So Gridler lets you choose between different rear patterns that's not limited to full area metal contact on the rear. For example, we can choose H pattern and then mix essentially the rear side also an H pattern with fingers and bus bar just like the front. You know, in this case, we can also make it dual print. We can in fact make the rear side exactly the same way as the front. So we can also save this one as bifacial design. 
Lastly, there is also something called a line contact full area metal. If you click that, you get something like this on the rear side. The red layer is these line contacts, and the blue layer is a blanket coverage of the rear. So this simulates a rear local contact cell. This is just one way of simulating the rear contact cell. We could also do it having full area metal contact and then entering effective parameters for the rear base recombination and contact resistance. In fact, Gridler Pro is equipped with a full feature calculator for you to easily do that and we'll cover that in another video. So at the moment, we're just gonna stick to this monofacial design. We hit next and that gets us already to the meshing screen which then sets things up ready for simulation. Remember that we had saved this pattern already, so if we go back to the title screen, we can push this import AutoCAD DXF and find our example monofacial design and load it through that way. And we end up loading the same pattern back. So the cool thing with Gridler is that when we had saved the pattern into AutoCAD DXF, we can actually open AutoCAD and edit the pattern there. So here it is, the monofacial style that we've saved now loaded in AutoCAD. If we look at the AutoCAD layers, we can see the wafer, the fingers on the front, the bus bars which we have defined by dual print being a separate layer from the fingers on the front. We can also see the so-called rear fingers, that's not really fingers, it is in fact uh, just the layer which is contacting the semiconductor or the back surface field, and so it is an almost uh, blanket coverage of the entire wafer rear. The wafer bus bars are these 16 solder pads. And then finally, the rear terminals are these uh, circles. So if we zoom in, you'll see each of these circles is a current extraction point on the rear side. Similarly, if we go back to looking at the front layer, we can also find the corresponding current extraction points on the front. So that altogether defines the cell. Now you can even choose to start entirely in AutoCAD to begin the solar cell design as long as you stick to these naming conventions for the different layers of the solar cell. These naming conventions can also be found in Gridler by pressing this help button right under this import AutoCAD DXF button. So here we call it AutoCAD design rules. All units are in millimeters. The layers should be named as shown to the right. Most of the time, what one may find most useful is to use Gridler to do most of the design work and then go into AutoCAD to make some editing. So here, let's do just a little bit of editing on the front layer. What we're gonna do is, for example, here I'm just gonna draw this extra connector between the two bus bars to connect all the fingers. That looks something like this. And I might decide I wanna duplicate it and then of course if you're doing a professional job, you can define the coordinates more precisely. Okay, so let's say we're done the editing. We will save the drawing back into the AutoCAD 2013 DXF format. We're going to name it version 2. We open Gridler and we're going to import this pattern back in. And here we can see these extra lines have already been drawn in. And when we hit analyze front to parse the pattern, we see that this extra line is integrated into the front grid that we had. Now, to a degree, we can also define extra shapes and even delete parts of shapes by clicking this post editing box in the meshing screen. We usually hide it to not clutter the screen too much with buttons, but just in case you need it, it's there. You can also create extra rectangles in the finger layer. Then when you hit analyze front, that also becomes integrated into the front grid. Now in the free version of Gridler, you can do it in a coarse way by defining the corners of the rectangle using the mouse. And then in the pro version, you can actually enter the exact coordinates of the corners of the rectangle. So that makes it a bit more precise. Gridler also allows you to create breaks. So that means subtract away from some of these shapes. So if you click create breaks, anywhere that you drew a rectangle, that will be the area where the front grid gets subtracted out. 
So again, we can analyze this pattern here, and we see that that part where we define these green triangles to define the breaks, there is no front grid. So that's in a nutshell the design features of Gridler. It's got this H pattern design page to let you quick, very quickly create a design for later simulation, or if you want to go straight ahead, save it into an AutoCAD DXF format that can then be shared, or you might be interested to make a screen for metal paste using this DXF file. And then for more elaborate features of the pattern, you can do editing as much as you want in AutoCAD as long as you stick to the layer naming conventions. Now at Team Gridler, we have also some in-house tools that allows us to convert drawings directly into AutoCAD DXFs and then play with them there. We use that for our video for creating metal wrap through cell designs. If you're interested in using that, we'll be happy to share with you these kind of in-house tools that we got. Although we believe that the H pattern designer already covers most of people's day-to-day -day job in terms of metalization pattern design.